Uh, next up we have uh, Elaine, Elaine Bean, and we've just had Let's, and we're going to move on to List. Yeah. Elaine. Thanks very much. Um, I was looking at what we could say about List, because I know a lot of you have probably heard about it, so I thought maybe we'll just say the story of List, because it's hard to believe for anybody who's heard us talking about List that it's actually 10 years on. You know, we started it in the academic year 2014, or sorry, it's, it's 10 years in this academic year. And so what I'm going to do is just give an overview of what happened, how List works, the success of it, and moving forward. So why did we start it? Um, I was working in reader services at the time, and I could see that there were lots of questions coming in. People were looking for basic things, and there were gaps there with what they needed. And so we designed a program based on what people were asking for. So if you look at it, we can see that we identified the needs of users. We got statistics, we had feedback forms, we talked to subject librarians. The feedback illustrated uh, that we needed more than just basic things. So we had to expand what we were covering. So LIST really helped students coming in because there is a big gap. And we've heard it talked about at many conferences that there is a gap from second level into third level. So that was why LIST started. Um, if we look at the last 10 years of it, what happened? This is to say, like, the top line sessions run throughout both semesters, but when we actually started it, we only held it in the first two weeks of term. When we moved on, we had 1,385 people attended in the first semester, 164 the first year that we did it, so the numbers have gone up considerably. We started off with eight topics, and we now have 33 topics in it, so it, the, the content has changed. And the collaboration is huge. We've got, we've got five departments that are working now. When we started off, it was just the library, because initially we were just doing things the library needed. But there was a bigger need, and we had to expand. And I have a slide that will show you all the departments that we're working with and the, the range of topics that we're doing. There's a tiny dip in the stats there. I'm not sure because we're just about to analyze all the feedback. So some of it could be because we got summoned and people felt they didn't need to be going for library catalog sessions. Um, but we do have to add in a few more stats just to show the end of the academic year. So you can see the numbers have been doing fairly well. The other little dip is when we were working on the new library and we were short of spaces. So it's, it's, looking, it's looking good. This is what's covered in it. So you can see the library presents and then we've got the Access Office, Careers, Computer Science, or Computer Center, um, Moodle Support, and um, we really had to expand and go into it. The bottom one is Student Counseling Services, and it was interesting because I was at a conference last week, and they were talking about the holistic approach to you know, the students and their needs. And it is interesting, when we were asked to look at could we put this into list, we were saying, is it really something that should be in list? Because list are all library topics and that. But you know, if they're having problems and they're stressed and they can't manage one thing, the whole thing has an impact on it. So we had a big debate about what could actually be included in LIST at the time. Now, LIST is successful and the campus you know, sees it as, as something that's working. And we have been asked to include topics that we haven't said yes to. So we're not just saying yes to everything. We are looking at topics. And so people are saying, yeah, it really works. Could you include this? We wondered as well, we had another name for it as well. We were going to see, could we have a kind of a list one that would be like the academic one and that we'd have another one that would cover more the sort of the bottom section there and we felt no list is working we're going to leave it like that and we're actually just going to be careful with the topics that we take into it so that's that's the background to it there this is why I think it works, because they're short drop-in sessions. And what we've done is we've put them in between lecture times. So they're at 10.15 to 10.45, or a quarter past the hour to a quarter two. So if they have a lecture off, they can fit it in between lectures. And we are really strict with the time. You have to stick within that time. There's nothing worse than coming to something and you're, you're sweating there thinking, I'm supposed to be at a lecture and somebody is still talking. And there might only be a handful of people at it. Can you get up and walk out? So they know they're finished. And even when we have guest people coming in, we say to them, it is a half an hour, you have to stick with the time. Um, the topics, we keep changing the topics, we keep changing how we describe the topics, and it's really important to do that. You know, even after two weeks into semester, and you say, well, do you know what, people aren't coming to this, but you can still see the need. You might have to go back and rewrite the name of it, or this, the description, how you're selling it to people, it just mightn't grab them. So you need to be ready to do that. Um, People can attend as often as they like. And this is interesting, too, because, you know, I stand here and I say something one way, and then somebody else will give the same topic, they say it a different way, and we hear different things from different people. So while the content is streamlined and we know exactly what we're saying, we deliver it differently, so people will often pick up more and will dip in and out of the things. I just put the back of list there. It's kind of hard to read them. 
but they're they're pretty good comments, you know, from people saying they should if they'd known about it earlier. And you're thinking, I have a banner up, I have it on the website. How many <laughs> times could I say it? But you know, I think it, Ronan reflected some of that. You have to wonder what happens sometimes, how they miss things. Um, the broad range of topics as well, it has helped us and it has really helped us for engaging with other departments in the university that we broadened out the topics that we cover and it has helped for other things. So it's definitely been a good step moving out and having other people involved in it. Um, continue throughout the year. This was, this is, you know, you could question this. You could say you don't get the numbers in the second semester, but who you get in the second semester are the people who really need it. They should have gone in the first semester, would have made their life easier, but they didn't, and so we deal with that. So you mightn't have the same numbers attending a session, but the value to that person is high because they really need it or they're stressed or they're panicked. I mentioned about building relationships. This really is important that you do. And we had a coffee morning where we invited the lecturers to come in to us where we could try and talk about LIST. And it worked because some of them hadn't heard about it before. The LIST certificate is another thing that has been really interesting. What happened with this is that students said to us, is there any way you can design something so we know what we've actually attended? And we said, yeah, okay, we'll put them on a certificate, we'll stamp it when you go, and actually at the end of it all, I remember being told before when I was starting off doing things like this, if you give something away for nothing, people will come in. So we said, we'll give them prizes every time. So we said, put your name on the cert and we'll give you a prize at the end. And then um, they were going to the sessions. The next thing we heard, a frantic, you know, at the end, uh, are there any more less sessions going on? And we're saying, why, what's the problem? I have to attend uh, three. So we saw this reflected in another slide as well. One of the lecturers decided that they, it was compulsory for their students to attend three list topics. So that was brilliant for us to think that the lecturers were seeing that it was important enough that it was making them go and attend some of the list cert certificates. So they were getting the cert stamped. And then subject librarians have, can use the, t the topic or the content that's there if they want to. Now we're also in the schools project as well and it's been really interesting because from working in the schools project mm -hmm. that we're doing, it has helped us to design lists and be aware that the gaps that are there from second to third. So we've also changed content in that to try and match what's happening there. So this is how you advertise, as they say, and they still say, is it on? When is it on? I miss that. So we have it everywhere. We use it all over the place. And my colleague Fiona is going to be talking tomorrow about some of the ways that we advertise. And it's, I think it's really interesting what Fiona has to say because it has changed the people looking at stuff, how they're looking at it. And when we were just putting up notices on Facebook and not using different things, they weren't engaging as much. So it'll be interesting to hear what Fiona is talking about and how we've used it. Um, we're looking at extending list. Um, we have trained tutors before. There's pluses and minuses to this. Sometimes it's hard to get them in. You can train them, but you can't get them back to retrain them. And we're looking at list online. But actually, what I'm going to do for list online is I'm just going to ring Jack because he has it all done. <laughs> so we're <laughs> going to give him a shout. But we are looking at how we can move forward. And exactly what you were saying, we we're going to design an online module. We're currently um, reviewing where we're at with the feedback for the academic year. And then with the fact that we have some and we need to look at what things we don't need to, co to cover anymore. So we're totally looking at list to see where we're at. And one of the good things here as well is that the external feedback is reflecting that we've had good, you know, that people are getting something out of it. And going forward, the university is reviewing the undergraduate, um, undergraduate curriculum and it's in a pilot stage, but what they are saying is that they're looking at the model of LIST and is it something that they could use to kind of put all the, the information into, to give it back to the students. And to conclude, because the red light's going to go any second, um, 10 years on, it's really hard to believe it's been 10 years. The model has changed, and I think it needs to be flexible if it's going to work. And it is possible to deliver lists in small sections. We started off with only a few. You don't have to start off with all of those. Um, aligning it with the wider teaching and learning, um, and you know, you, you need to get more people involved and see what people need. Don't just go in the library doing it on their own. Um, and scan the horizon. If we don't get out there and tell them that the library is there and we can do more than people might think, we're just going to be doing the same stuff. My contact details there, so that's a list. Thank you.